Hi, I'm Mark, producer of Roundtable, a TV series born here in New York City at the legendary Manhattan Neighborhood Network Studios. The exchange of ideas is important, and that is why we bring to you the following presentation. Please watch. Welcome to Single Shot Show at Manhattan Neighborhood Networks Roundtable. Tonight we yet again visited an amazing gallery of uh, Spencer Throckmorton and he found some time to tell us about his new and indeed extremely exciting exhibition. Hello Spencer and thank you very much for thank having us for here having again. That's really great. So uh, what do you have on the plate for New Yorkers this time? It's a, a, an incredible early show of Graciela Turbide. She's been a photographer for 50 years. And this is a retrospective of her work. And it covers from 1979 to 1919. Uh, let's try to educate our viewers a little bit and just tell uh, them a little bit about this photographer, what's mm -hmm. her primary uh, motive, what uh, she's famous for, let's just give some background. She's, uh, she studied with Manuel Labras Bravo, she's Mexico's most famous woman photographer. She has won every major award that a photographer could hope to win in one's lifetime. She, uh, all over the world, she won the Pritzker Award, she won the Hasselblad Award in 2008, she won in 2009 the Hokkaido Japanese Award for Photography. She's been given two honorary uh, the, uh, doctorates from the University of San Francisco uh, in California. And she has uh, won the Golden Plume Award, the Lucy Award, uh, a Lifetime Achievement Award with uh, ICP, and uh, but her famous work is dealing with the indigenous people of Mexico, and she started uh, in the 70s, and she did a, a beautiful exhibition on the Siri Indians and the area of Huchitan, and uh, the museum in Boston has these wonderful works, vintage, available for exhibition. Uh, it will run through May, and Graciela will be there giving a lecture in the early part of May. Um, we were very lucky to have worked with Graciela for over 30 years, and we consider her our most important photographer. And as a woman photographer, she has traveled extensively, she's done work in India, she's done work in Italy, and her Pritzker Award was for her work in India and Italy. Oh, uh, her work seems to be pretty diverse. Uh, did you have any specific theme in mind, any specific uh, approach to curating this particular collection you display? Yeah, we wanted to uh, emphasize her early work from 1979 to 89. It's, uh, all dealing with Mexico and images of Mexico. Well, oh, that's quite exciting, and it's indeed a timely uh, choice of uh, the theme, and it's a, indeed a beautiful collection. So, why wouldn't we just go around and see what uh, okay. we have there? Okay. Okay. Uh, this one is Nuestra Señora de las Iguanas, it's from 1979. And the remarkable thing about this photograph is that the iguanas are alive. The lady was taking them to the market. She had raised them so they were very um, much like pets. And when she placed them on her head, Graciela said, hold it, and she took the photograph. And it's an incredible photo. It has become it is. an icon of her work. And uh, the iguanas, this photograph has been on the, uh, the cover of Smithsonian Magazine. 
It's been in National Geographic. It's been on many, many uh, exhibitions and in many catalogs on Graciela. Well, uh, what's peculiar about this work is indeed the fact that it's actually uh, depicting uh, a natural scene. It's mm -hmm. not set up. Uh, there are a lot of images with a similar direction, especially with reptiles of all sorts which was specially created in a studio to portray the specific image, but something coming from an everyday life of uh, the society is indeed is interesting and beautiful. Yeah, it was filmed right in the market in Mexico City. This is uh, what Graciela calls the self-portrait of childhood, and it's a young uh, Mexican child as a, uh, as a fairy and uh, like a princess. And so uh, that was representative t to her of her childhood as growing up in an upper class uh, family in Mexico City and enjoying the festivals and different uh, feast days to celebrate uh, um, this the is, church. This is some local celebration, I presume. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, local. It but it's, a, it's interesting because it's a very nice young child and it's a, she's a little uh, startled, but yet she's uh, happily on her way with her crown, and it's, wow. uh, she nice. calls it a self-portrait. I think it's very interesting. Yeah, it is indeed. And this is a, uh, a, a mass dancer from one of the feast days. He's sitting on a merry-go-round that is not being used, it's being stored, uh, for also for another uh, feast day. Mm -hmm. And uh, this photograph is a vintage, these all three are vintage, and this one is uh, Juanita from the Town series, and she's a uh, seller in the market of fruit. And uh, it's just a, a, a very nice portrait of a fruit seller. And uh, this uh, three on its own is a very interesting series, if you mm -hmm. think it's about it. It's from 1979. Yes, they yeah. was uh, also photographed at about the same time, right? Yes, uh, the one here is 76. 76. It's a little bit earlier. Well, similar period. Well, that's indeed a very interesting mm -hmm. series and uh, the contrast between uh, a uh, middle-aged woman from working class and a young child uh, who um, never, probably will never have to work if uh, she have the same fate uh, as a photographer herself. That's indeed interesting. Oh, and uh, what about this work over there uh, with uh, your, uh, some animals? Um, famous photographs. Uh, it's it's a uh, they're called the dogs, and it's taken in India but the positioning of the dogs on the hill with the birds above is quite, uh, it, it just is a natural occurrence. It's not staged. It's just um, what she saw when she was traveling in India. Well, it's but the spacing and the, the use of the birds and the, and the dogs is the quite dramatic. The timing as a person who photograph uh, birds a lot, I can appreciate how almost impossible it is to catch something that creates such a cohesive composition uh, from yeah, so many poetic. moving objects. Right, and it's very poetic. You've got four Absolutely. You've got five moving objects. Yes, uh, the whole movement is actually have some Asherian uh, motives in it because if you would think about it, it goes in the endless loop. Yes. The dogs are moving towards the bottom left uh, end uh, corner of the picture and the birds are moving towards upper right and there is another bird that concludes the circle. Right, that's true. It's indeed a very special piece. So, let's proceed. So this one is a conversation to women of the Huchitan area. Uh -huh. It's a matriarchal society in the southern part of Mexico, Huchitan, as well as this one to uh, young ladies on a float. This is called the Quinceañas, or coming of age, and uh, it's uh, when a young girl reaches the age of 15. So it's also a very famous image of Graciela. It's called Quince Años, which is 15 years. Oh, uh, what's actually very interesting, uh, last time we was talking about another exhibition of uh, photographers from Mexico and we mentioned uh, the role of 
matriarchal part of the society and uh, yet we're coming back to this uh, theme again and it sounds to me like it actually plays uh, a lot bigger role in uh, Mexico than in many other societies that was founded on European uh, approach to life. I yeah. presume it's uh, something that came from traditional way of life of the region. Yes, it's true. You're quite right. It is from the region. Yes, so. so the traditional outfits probably in a way emphasizing that, that particular idea and yeah, concept. These are regional costumes of the area and this is a celebration as well as the celebration here for a float and uh, the, the uh, costumes in this area are quite beautiful. It's all hand embroidered. I can definitely mm -hmm. see the mastership there. The detail of both photograph and the photographed costume are incredible. Yeah. And uh, what about this piece? It's quite different from everything we've seen so far. Graziella is very, uh, has worked all over the world and she came to America and did a series on American photographs. This is uh, called The White Fence and it's from uh, East LA and uh, it's uh, one of her East LA series. She did a whole uh, thing on the uh, Chicanos living in Mexico and living in uh, East LA, coming to East LA and then going back. Oh, what actually caught my attention right away when I looked at the picture is uh, the tattoo with uh, hands of Saint Mary mm -hmm. right on her, which yeah. makes it a very interesting combination with traditional matriarchal uh, society photos we have on the very same wall. Oh, that's true, it's I had noticed that. That's yeah. great. Huh. These are from the 80s. Uh, the one, in the most famous one is called Cemeterio and these are actually uh, a swarm of locusts and the lady is collecting wood and you see rushes from the church because it's near the Easter time so those are palm branches there and she's collected wood and she's on her way home with wood so that's it's just very interesting to have the locusts flying like that it's very incredible well indeed it's incredible and i would wonder if the artist actually intentionally put so many biblical motives in the photograph related just, to the church it just, property it just happened because these are uh, those are actually uh it's uh, near a cemetery and uh -huh. you can see the the um, tombs there behind her so it's mm -hmm. quite biblical alligator it's from 89 and again it's from the Huchitan area and uh, the lady's pet was an alligator so uh, it's a stuffed alligator here oh it's it's a stuffed one yes not interesting a wow that's Indeed, a but very interesting picture. In a way, reminding mm -hmm. me of the traditional family portraits photography. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with it's, it's animal it's instead of a child on the lap. Right. Well, she didn't have a child, so that was, you know. Okay, that's. That's very interesting. That's very deep in a way. Yeah. Especially considering that alligators, in a way, uh, are staple of the region for everybody outside of this region. That's what mm -hmm. we associate it with uh, when we think about it. Mm -hmm. Wow, beautiful, yeah. beautiful work. This one is number uh, 13, it's, it's called the Hawk, and it's from, uh, it's a hawk that's being kept by the Seminole Indians in Florida, because she uh, did a series on the Seminole Indians in Florida as well. She's very much interested in indigenous cultures. And ah. the second one is uh, parakeets, and uh, that was taken in Mexico. They're both around 19, the, 1979 and 1980. Mm -hmm. And the other one, the next one is by from uh, Tascala from Mexico. It's for a carnival and the plumes is a mass dancer and uh, it's quite an extraordinary one. It's from 1974. Oh, actually, if we can get back to uh, the photographs of the birds, it's actually mm -hmm. so fascinating that uh, she have have special uh, uh, vision for photographing birds in particular. I already noticed it from uh, those few images we already seen. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the birds uh, usually take one out of handful of poses and catching them in the pose that is not one of those mm -hmm. is almost impossible. Mm -hmm. Every time uh, we're looking at her photographs of the birds, 
it's one of uh, the poses they've taken rarely or have to be caught at, especially uh, the one for the hook. Yeah, very much. Very unusual angle and very unusual pose. Yeah. And uh, here we have... We have another hood from Gucci Tan from yes. 1979 and it's a vintage print and she deals with a lot of uh, the ladies on a patate, indigenous cultures and she's uh, it's a very tender photograph of a mother and a young mother and child. Yeah, it's actually indeed very mm -hmm. tender and uh, in a way it has something very archaic about it, mm -hmm. but on the other hand something very timeless. modern. Yeah, very timeless. Yes. Yeah. Her photographs are timeless. It's really amazing. Indeed, a lot yeah. of them falling into the category of those that could have been taken at any moment of history of uh, the world. Really. It's uh, also from the Huchitan series and the lady was walking by this wall and Graciela said just hold it and the uh, graffiti is on a wall in Mexico in the Huchitan area and it's for a political campaign and that's why it's uh, painted out oh. and so the lady is just uh, standing in front of a uh, destroyed uh, political sign. So oh. it's a great, uh, it looks like a Jackson Pollock to me. In a way it does, so in a way it actually looks like there is some uh, light painting happening behind her. Mm -hmm. This is called The Healing, it's also from the Gucci Town series, and it's a young girl being blessed. And uh, she's using a coin, uh, and next to it is also another from Gucci Town, young boy with uh, his mother. Yeah, but the interesting part is that he's holding it, uh, a gun. Oh yeah, there is yeah. a shot barrel revolver in his head. Yes, a revolver. And something similar to the broad they had on his head at the same yes. time. Yes. It's at all cultures at all times like the weapons. Yeah, that's true. And this is for the Easter celebration uh, of Christ and this is uh, the descent from the cross and there are the wings of the two angels and uh, it's from Chama area of Mexico mm -hmm. and the one next to it is called Killings where they uh, sacrifice goats and uh, for a feast and what's happening here is they have slaughtered goats and you have uh, uh, a backbone of a goat on the wall there Oh, that's actually interesting. I wasn't aware that they uh, have goat sacrifices still uh, happening. Well, they, they're doing it for a feast. It's, it's more for a feast than a sacrifice, but it's, uh, it's like a sacrifice because it's done in Easter. Oh, yeah. Well, that uh, sounds a little more like a <laughs> Catholic country for me. Yeah. Oh, this is very interesting. Yeah. One. To me, this is uh, an interesting one of uh, Graciela's too. It's a vintage because of the dog coming into the picture and the child. And it's not staged. Graciela just walked by an open doorway and saw this scene and she caught it. I think it's really an incredible, uh, decisive moment. And yes, it would be safe to say that uh, she has a talent of turning an accidental shot into something that looks like it was premeditated and. Mm -hmm. uh, carefully designed in the studio. Mm -hmm. Again, the same story, the studio style lighting, the studio style uh, strength of composition. Well, it's natural sunlight coming into the doorway. Yes, yeah. and uh, probably because it was uh, in a doorway, the uh, lighting looks like it's specifically crafted in the studio. Mm -hmm. Because being uh, recessed in the darkness created this contrast between the background and the foreground and relatively soft uh, shadows. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And uh, this collection of religious images? Yeah, this is uh, from the Huchitan series. It's a, a lady that's in her home and those are her religious icons. Oh, well, it's actually interesting that one of the icons depicts somebody in uh, traditional uh, Aboriginal uh, yeah. custom. Yeah, yes. it's from the Oaxaca series. It's from Oaxaca. And it dates from uh, 1984. Yeah, it's really hard to describe this uh, collection of objects 
as one, but uh, indeed there is something in them that speaks on subconscious level. Oh, yeah, and this one is very active, even though there is no physical moving movement going on. Well, this is called powerful hands, and those are votive hands being taken to an uh, altar. Uh -huh. And uh, actually, uh, they are, uh, uh, you see a lot of retablos in Mexico of like God's hands. Uh -huh. So they're really powerful votive images. And these are two votive sculptures being placed on an altar, and they're walking in front of a uh, batch of uh, the young boy with uh, his mother in the Sonora Desert, which is uh -huh. interesting because you have a uh, clash of Indian culture and, and modern culture with the bike. Mm -hmm. And it's a very remote area, very primitive area of Mexico. And yet civilization reached it. And it reached it, yes. Oh. Probably uh, the most interesting for me part is the actual uh, lines from the tires. Mm -hmm. Because the bike will be gone, but those lines will remain at least for some time as a sign of civilization, even if people wouldn't be present yes. at that particular area. And, and they don't wear, you know, with, uh, she's wearing sandals, and so it's an interesting area. It's a very hot area. That's Indeed. why she has the clothing because of the sun. And these, this one is from Michoacan, it's two, uh, it's New Year's Day, and they're on their way to the church and they're bringing two can votive candles as offerings to the church. Wow. And they're two peasant ladies, indigenous uh, Mexican ladies. Wow, indeed a very two moving picture. Yeah, it's very the, the facial expressions are the most precious in this one. Yeah, they're very devoted. And yeah, one, one of them is very expressive and another one have almost complete uh, calmness on her face, mm -hmm. if you think about it, complete uh, re removing herself from the outside world. Yeah, that's one of the tranquility that's so evident in uh -huh. Graciela's photographs. They're very quiet and, and uh, emotional. Yeah, indeed, most of uh, the energy is actually hidden under the surface in most of the images we just seen. Mm -hmm. That's true. Right. They were from 2005, 2007, and they were both photographed in Oaxaca. This is uh, the daughter of an elaborate Bravo, and her stockings are actually not stockings, but are tattoos of stockings. That's which is very interesting tattoo. So, yes. And, uh, well, I can't help to notice that the approach uh, of those two photographs is very different from uh, mm -hmm. what we've seen before. So it's a change of the style of the artist, some kind of evolution. Yeah, it is an evolution. And the other one is uh, for the Virgin of Guadalupe. It's uh, taken of a float that was uh, going to be used in a procession in Oaxaca. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's uh, the symbolic uh, halo of the Virgin of Guadalupe, but it's, mm -hmm. the figure is not there. It's intended for a lady to stand on the float to become the Virgin of Guadalupe. And then you have wow. two spiny cactuses on both sides on the float. It's an actual parade float for the day of Guadalupe celebration. It's very interesting image, especially with uh, the history behind it. Yeah, which is interesting is that there's a cloud in the sky because it's, it's high up. So actually there's a little wisp of a cloud coming over. Yeah. And, and as a little touch of a contrast between uh, the natural landscape on the picture and uh, the landscape where the photograph was actually taken, there are wires faintly mm -hmm. visible on the background reminding that there is civilizations oh, around there. Uh, also, uh, a very interesting one. It's uh, the Virgin Nina, or the, the young virgin, and it's uh, from Michoacan, and it's, uh, they would have decorated this with flowers and paper. So she's, uh, it's an old, uh, she's in the float room where they make floats for uh, the processions, and yet she's all dressed for the festival. But it's beautiful because it's like, uh, uh, again, like a, um, a, a halo of 
halo around her, so it makes it very special and the light quality of her clothing makes it very religious. Really fascinating, and uh, the whole collection is just something emotionally extremely moving and provided a lot of uh, material for intellectual uh, journey in the uh, history of Mexico and in a way in the modern day of it because mm -hmm. we don't know enough about modern day Latin America but we know so much less about the history of it and something like this provides the important insight of where this country came from and what it shared that their uh, traditions are still alive and mm -hmm. they survive from the colonial times into today with the feast days and the uh, celebrations and very much uh, rooted in the Catholic Church. Um, on the other hand, uh, it's actually very closely connected to traditional beliefs and uh, ways of religion. Yes, yes, it's true. Latin America is one of the regions of the world where Christianity is the most closely, closely connected to traditional beliefs and uh, many other places the adaptation of this sort happened much earlier than in Mexico. And here we're probably witnessing the process of it being turned into something to Yes, exactly. Beautifully put. Yes, uh, just uh, the mere fact that uh, I can't help but notice that uh, a lot of uh, actually alive person bodies are used as the part of the decoration of the float is something very uh, paganistic, very traditional for the region, at least in my understanding. Mm -hmm. In uh, our American approach, we usually have a person being on the float and the decoration being something separate, but in this case, the person actually is playing a role in part of the process. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's something very doing very special. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, thank you very much, thank you. It was a great, uh, well, great journey time. and uh, we hope to see more of the beautiful collections like this. Well, I think Brazil is, is so important as a, as a, for the me generation now because uh, as a woman photographer she has had to fight against a, a male-dominated culture and she has uh, come out with beautiful imagery and great work. We want this fight. Yes, we want Definitely a great example for all of us. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I hope you found that worth watching as much as I did. I'm Mark for Roundtable. Thanks for watching. See you next week.